Okay, we're up at the up at my little bench here now where I can do a bit of filming and show you what I've done. Now, I ended up having the bush, um, the new bushes for the pedestal here. So the part number, it's a Sparex part number. The Sparex number is S40117. And they're a steel backed brass bush, just like the old one was. And I've had this little piece dolly die jigger <laughs> machined up for ages. I had it for some other job, but it just worked out that it fitted perfectly down in the centre here to, to fit the bushes. So I fitted the bushes at both ends. I just pressed them in and I'll just put that out of the way. Oh, to get the old bushes out, they do have a split in them and... I felt around to see if I could find where the um, where the split was, and I've got a screwdriver that I've got the back. The back's rounded, so I don't mark up any housings. If I keep it in frame, now it'd be good length. So the back's rounded, and the front's straight. So the idea is I, I bring it in the side here with the rounded. There's a chamfer here, so you try and push it in, and you can see I had a few attempts before I found where the split was, and as soon as I found where the split was. Um, it just peeled back and the bush collapsed and away we went. Um, so yeah, most of the bushes have a, um, just have a plain split in them like that, so that's no worries. So, hey, there's the drop. All right, so the S40117 bush, I've pressed them in and they're undersized, so they need reaming out. So I have a, I have a ream here, which reams up to inch and a half it's a hand ream an adjustable hand ream reaming's a bugger of a job in a straight bush like this i don't have a guide for the bottom now when you do kingpins or when you do two bushes and and try and get it exactly to the center or you know the two exactly in line you normally have a piece to screw on the end here and there's a little collar that comes up and keeps you central this is the only ream, this is my biggest ream, and it's the only one I haven't got one of those for. So, so we're going to have to ream the bushes out later um, to a certain size. Now, I'm gonna go off track here a little bit. So, I'll put that over there so I can hold the notebook up, and yes, you can see it. Good work, Lance. I'll get good at this if I keep it up, eh? Okay. Now, on the shaft here, to ream the bushes out, there's a little bit of a problem. Um, this shaft, so pretend the shaft is sitting that way with the thread up, that was the top, that was the top of the tractor where the little arm was. This is the big hooked arm down the bottom there. So, so I've measured the shaft up. We have the nut at the top. That's the tapered spline. I haven't drawn it tapered, but that's fine. And then down at the bottom there, this dark area here with the grease tube in it, with the grease hole in it, there should be a grease nipple comes down the top here. Um, that's worn out of round. So the bush, the, the bush surface area varies from 1.483 thou to 1.496 thou. So there's around 13 thou out of round there. And look, that's to be expected because most of the tractor's life, it was probably in the straight ahead position, and so it would have worn that way. Now down the bottom end, down this bottom end here, the, it goes from 1.485 to 1.498. Now, the center of the shaft, look, it's, it's supposed to be inch and a half, but they've given three thou clearance, so that's actually really 1.497 inches. So what the problem is here is if I machine this bush out here or here to get the shaft through, I've got to machine it to 1.497 at least, probably 498, you know, a thou or two um, tolerance to get this section in here in. So what that does, if I machine the bushes out big to fit this bit in, we've already 
built in say 15,000, yeah say 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch wear in that shaft so the shaft will slop around. So what I've decided to do is the new Bush ID is around 1.484, 1.485. So that's my absolute minimum. Now, if I machine the bush to 1.485, or if I, um, if I, yeah, if I ream this bush to 1.485 to fit the worn part of the shaft here, there's no way I can push this fat part of the shaft up through and go through. I need it. I need to have it here, that clearance there. So I've come up with a plan. <laughs> this spline here is 1.498, roughly the bottom half of the spline, the straight half. We don't want to machine that down. Now that part there is where the big arm goes on. It needs the full spline, as much spline there as we can get as, as the goal and yeah, you can see that it does look a bit dark on the screen um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to put this shaft in my lathe I've got some good carbide tips I'm expecting this to be hard and I'm going to machine this area right up to the end here to where that spline starts now that spline at that end see we only come down to this section there so if I machine from around I did have a mark there around there all the way up and off the end there off the end here what I can do then is I can take this wear out I can round a lot of that wear out I'll, I might even do that a little bit deeper we'll see um, so I can leave this spline as fat as it can go I can machine this shaft down. It's got a nice center in the end there. I can pick up on the threads up this end. I've got a six jaw chuck, so there shouldn't be enough pressure to do any damage there. And I can come through here and try and keep it at, look, 1.484, 1.485, um, which there'll still be on this one, there'll be like a couple of thou movement in it. This one down the bottom, there'll be bugger all. And if I get this right, and I can get a tip in under the hardness, the hardening, and, and get it to run down, we're just taking a, a very light cut. Um, I may not have to ream the bushes at all. I may be able to bring this to size, but um, you can see just there, just there is where the bushes run normally, there to there, and up here this was sitting down a bit so it started there but it ended up up here because the shaft sat down with the wear and all that sort of thing so actually there it ended there and you can see the start just up through here so that's the plan um, that way I can put this together like brakes and steering on tractors are everything um, and I, I can't buy this shaft aftermarket at all that I can find um, I haven't checked genuine, but yesterday when I pulled it out, I was having a feel, and I thought, oh, that's pretty good. But then, yeah, when you sit down and look at putting the bush in, well, it's a different story. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head off. I won't film up on the lathe. It's bloody boring watching the bloke on the lathe. Well, boring to watch me anyway. Uh, <laughs> I watch A-bomb and all that. I love it. But anyway, um, I learn a lot. But, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to start at the end of this spline here, there somewhere. Um, if I don't get that quite right, I can still bring the lower bush in slightly and just move it up a little bit. And I'm going to try and round these worn areas up and make it so I don't build, with the new bushes and reaming them out, I don't build slop into this steering pedestal right away. Okay, I've been up and I've um, machined the shaft and got it as round as I can. It's still not completely round. We run out of room um, at one end. So yeah, this, this bottom end's a little rounder than the top end. That's where all the wear went. But when we put this top bush or top shaft into the top bush, I machined it down to fit in there. So 
you can see because I can rock that shaft a little bit you can see that it's not completely round but when I take it into a non-worn part you can see there's no rock there anymore so so I'm pretty happy with that now at the other end here it doesn't really want to go in so I know the other bush must be just slightly larger than this bottom bush here so I think our next bet and oh you'll notice the, the I've taken it to about there you can just oh yeah you can just see a mark where I machined it too so that you know they haven't got a chance of fitting in there so it looks like I'm going to have to pop the ream in here and just take a couple of thou out to match that size there and see how we go. Okay, we're going to use an adjustable ream here and you can see our ream is set too large for what we need to do. So we'll just loosen this off, bring it all down a little. The higher you go, the wider the jaws come out with these. So we'll just tighten this up and see how we're sitting. Look, that's pretty good. I might just go a little bit smaller. Nip that down. And that mightn't be too bad. Actually, I'm going to go smaller again, because if I only start cutting up here, that's fine by me. Too much. And the first cut, I don't want it really to take much meat out. I just want it to true up the hole in case it's out a little bit, you know, in case, okay, in case when we pressed it in, we got it um, a little bit not right. Still a little bit loose. Okay, that's not too bad. We've got our... What brand is this old girl? Greenfield. Greenfield tap handle. We'll put that up the top here and tighten that up. Now I'll find a bit of oil. We need to put a heap of oil on this thing. Yep, that'll do. And I've got a bucket underneath. Okay, we'll just, the idea is just to turn it evenly, as smooth as you can. And I'm looking just to take a sliver off and this first cut is just to make sure we're completely round. Okay, so we need to keep turning. Even when we pull it out, we keep turning in the direction that we were going. And I can see a couple little marks there. I'll try and make sure there's no swath, just in case it was just a little out of round that was causing us the trouble. No, we need to go a tad more. So, yep, you can see that, only just. Perhaps if I pan out a little bit, you can see a bit more of it. Heaps of oil. And once again, as smooth and as straight as we can using two hands. And that's just taking the smallest sliver out of there.
and rinse and repeat. I'll grab a little bit of rag, I think. You can hear the shed creaking in the background, probably. That's just working in a big tin shed. Uh, we can go quite a bit more yet. So we'll go say half a turn with the nut. You can see inside the bush there where it's been taking it a little bit off. You can feel that biting in a little bit better. And you can feel that the hole is actually round now. And we'll try and pull that back out. Like I said before, we don't have a guide for this one. The old shed's going nuts, creaking away, but anyway. And you can see the extra meat that we took off there, so maybe that's enough. Oh, look at that. That's just lovely. You can see the fat section doesn't want to go through. So, if I oh, hang on to this, sit it up there, now the shaft will sit there, I can't feel any movement there, oh look that's lovely, we're going to call that a win. Um, so what we ended up doing, I machined the shaft to the top bush and the bottom bush was slightly smaller. So, I'll just check that it wants to turn all the way. Um, yeah, that's okay. That's the loosest patch, and there's no movement there. Okay, look, that's gonna be great. That's gone down too, gone down too far now. There we go, up there. Okay, that's great. Um, um, now when we put this pedestal in, we're going to have to put the arm in and bring the whole pedestal down from the top into the lower arm. I can have all this part assembled, that's no worries at all. I can set this up how I want it with the top arm. And when we put the pedestal in to where it goes, we can, slide, we can hold the bottom arm in place, slide that in, and yeah, do him up snug so we haven't got any movement. Okay, I haven't got the felt for here yet. I'll have a look in some of my kingpin kits, see if I've got one the right size. And if I can find a felt for here, I'll assemble this top end. Um, I do need to clean the paint off here and tidy it up a bit. Um, clean the thread for a grease nipple, but Look, that's the basics of it. You know what we're up to with it now. Um, yeah, that'll do for rebushing the pedestal and yep, making the sharp. Okay, I found a felt. Now, it's a little bit fat probably. But that's from, um, that's from a kingpin housing. So it saves me waiting for the other ones. That seems like it'll fit there okay. The shaft has to drop down a little bit. Oh, come on, Gertie. So it's nice and firm there. So with the arm, I'll grab the arm and that, 
and the washer I made in a previous episode the stepped washer here so we'll put this on here we'll put the stepped washer on the spring washer and the nut a little way there but that's the right way Oh, I doubt this will open up far enough, no. Okay, I'll close the vise a little. Sit that in there. Now, can you see that? Yes, you can. I'm getting bloody good at this. Now, that's a bit, a bit firm. No, that's not the right size. I think that's an inch and a half spanner. It is inch and a half AF. So I am going to pull this apart again. Um, reason is I want to flush the shaft out. Um, flush the shaft in all the grease there. Um, I want to pack a bit of grease in the centre here, put a new grease nipple in here, but we can just do a test run here. There's a lot of fiddling around restoring tractors. Well, there is when I do it. Oh, look at that. Pull this nut up as that's pretty close to where it is. Look at that, not a sausage. Okay, there's just one little firm patch there where this top bush must be slightly out of round. But look, that's nothing to worry about, that's for sure. Okay. That's all we're going to do with this pedestal for a little while. Um, I will pull it apart off camera, uh, make sure everything's clean. Um, I'll probably get this paint off while it's easy to get off. Like at the moment, you can get a grinder or a, a 3M pad or something like that and get all the paint off. And um, I've got to clean the bottom surface still. But there you go, that's it for the steering pedestal. Next time you see this, we'll probably be putting it in the tractor.